Hello everyone, welcome to MSP lecture series on advanced transmetallic chemistry. In my previous lecture, I discussed about the impact of ligand field on the energy of various d orbitals to make you familiar in writing crystal field splitting diagrams for various geometries. Uh, let me continue from where I had stopped. Again I did mention about uh, how similarities one can envisage in case of tetrahedral as well as uh, cubic crystal field splitting and having the same uh, splitting pattern. Let us look into more examples now. First let us look into the square planar crystal field splitting that you are all familiar and also I showed in my previous lecture how they split. You can see here 4 ligands are in the plane and if you assume molecule is sitting with the z axis perpendicular to the plane of the molecule that means molecule is placed along x and y plane so that we have 4 ligands approaching along x minus x and y minus y direction and no ligands are uh, approaching along z direction as a result what happens any orbital that is oriented in the z direction or in the z associated planes their energy will be low and hence dz square and dxz and dyz have relatively lower energy. But on the other hand 4 ligands are coming along the xy plane as a result uh, dx square minus y square will be having higher energy and then dxy has partial overlapping and it has little lower energy compared to dx square minus y square. And this is the typical crystal field splitting diagram for square planar uh, complexes here. So now let us look into an interesting geometry that is linear geometry. Linear geometry I did mention about uh, a few examples uh, diamine silver complex and also I did explain about how valence bond theory explains uh, in a very unusual way taking 3 orbitals and making 2 sp orbital through the mixing of dz square s yes, and pz orbitals. Let us look into the splitting diagram using crystal field theory to understand the relative energies of d orbitals. And let us assume uh, the linear molecule we are considering is placed along z axis. So something like this, this is a, a linear molecule, a metal center is coordinated to 2 ligands in a linear fashion. As usual, uh, we have to now write the crystal field splitting for which we have to understand the orientation of these 5 orbitals with respect to. Uh, this linear geometry that we have given for this ML2 molecule. And to begin with simply write Cartesian coordinates and identify 3 planes here xy plane and xz plane and yz plane here. Now I place like this, now I have to see the consequence of placing this one in this fashion on various d orbitals. This is dx minus y square and then this is dz square of course it is greatly affected because these 2 ligands are also coming in the same direction. And then we have uh, dxy orbital and then again uh, to make you familiar to give stress upon your understanding I put again linear molecule here and I will take it out and add xz and dxy is already added, yz I have added and I have added xz. Now we should try to write the relative energies of d orbitals under the influence of linear crystal field. Let us consider, so we are considering these 5 d orbitals. Uh, obviously you should know which one is here because this is dz square the molecule is in this direction here and now the second one will be dxz and dyz and the least energetic ones are dxy and dx square minus y square. 
So, this is for linear crystal field splitting. So, it is very easy, is that right? So, now another interesting one hexagonal planar uh, geometry. And if you recall Werner's coordination theory, he prepared a series of octahedral complexes having different composition like MA6 and MAB5 and MA2B4 and MA3B3 to identify which uh, geometries would give isomers and accordingly he tried to isolate as many isomers as possible and later he concluded with that important uh, experimental work that uh, for coordination number 6 the most preferred geometry would be octahedral. And have you come across any examples of transmetal complexes having hexagonal planar geometry? It is very difficult because you have to put lot of stress on uh, orbitals to orient in this fashion by, by distorting their original positions and that really makes unstable as a result we do not come across examples for uh, hexagonal planar geometry especially when coordination number 6 is there. The most preferred geometry is octahedral and the alternate one we have at our disposal is trigonal prismatic geometry. But nevertheless let us try to look into it and find out whether any example is there or not in the literature. Okay. This is hexagonal planar. So, as usual I place Cartesian coordinates and look into relative uh, positions of various orbitals here to understand the impact of them uh, on the 6 ligands approaching in this xy plane. You can see the 6 directions in which 6 ligands are approaching the matter to establish uh, ML6 having hexagonal planar geometry. It appears like a imaginary, but later you will be surprised to see a result in the literature. So, this is how I have placed some orbitals here. You can see which are the orbitals I have placed here. I have placed dx minus y square and dz square and dxy. Now, I should place again Cartesian coordinates and add xz and yz here. So, that means if you go back here you can see that since 6 ligands are in the plane now whatever the uh, 6 ligands are in the xy plane whatever the orbitals that are present in the xy plane will be uh, affected more. And once again if you see here uh, dxy has maximum overlap with the direction of approach of 6 ligands compared to dx square minus y square. As a result here the energy of dxy will be much higher compared to dx square minus y square. Next comes dz square we do not have anything and same things to in case of dxz and dyz. So, that writing in the crystal field splitting diagram for hexagonal planar geometry would be very easy. Once again right consider 5 d orbitals and then here it splits into 4 levels now i have shown 4 levels out of which third one is uh, from top or second one from bottom is doubly degenerate and as i mentioned dxy has maximum overlapping with direction 4 ligands would have overlapping with dxy when they are approaching along the xy plane. So, dxy will be much higher in energy. The next one is dx square sy square. Next what we have is dxz and dyz and the least energetic one is dz square. So, this is how one should be able to write crystal field splitting for hexagonal planar molecule if at all if it exists among coordination compounds of 3D, 4D or 5D. It is very easy, is that right? So, now uh, I, may, I gave a list of several geometries, I am going to discuss uh, one or two more, but nevertheless you make an attempt to write crystal field splitting diagrams for all geometries that I showed or you can look into various polyhedra and also you make an attempt to write crystal field splitting diagram for them. The question is any metal complex is known in the literature with coordination number 6 having an hexagonal planar structure. 
Yes, there was a paper appeared in Nature in 2019 uh, that of a palladium complex having hexagonal planar geometry. So, this is the uh, molecule shown here. We can clearly see palladium is coordinated to 6 ligands, 3 hydrates are there and 3 magnesium moieties are there and here magnesium is attached to a, a ligand called NAC-NAC and this ligand is derived by uh, reacting with a very bulky primary amines with acetyl acetonate and these ligands have been extensively used in various uh, uh, aspects of both main group chemistry and uh, transfer metal chemistry. And here one interesting thing is they have made a, a magnesium uh, complex, this is a monoanionic, so magnesium is still has one electron to donate and now 3 such bulky groups are attached to okay, palladium in this fashion and in between we have 3 hydrogen atoms are there. And then if I ask you to identify the oxygen state of palladium and oxidation of state of palladium in this molecule comes to 0 because 3 anionic are there and 3 cations are there eventually they cancel and the palladium uh, is a d10 system and now all 6 ligands are according to uh, covalent method one electron they are donating this is a d10 16 electron complex and this is how uh, the structure looks like that you can see here how uh, the entire metal coordination sphere looks planar here. This came in nature in 2019. This is the only example we have to show that this very unusual geometry is also quite possible with transfer metals. It is, it is very interesting and it is a surprise result here. So now let us look into hexagonal bipyramidal crystal field splitting. In my previous slide I showed you about writing crystal field splitting diagram to hexagonal planar. Now let us see how to write the similar crystal field splitting for hexagonal bipyramidal geometry. Here only the difference between the previous one hexagonal planar and hexagonal bipyramidal is we have two more ligands approaching along z direction. So that means they have an impact on uh, dz square orbital and probably energy of that one is elevated in contrast to what we came across in case of hexagonal planar that is going to be the only the difference or anything else we shall see. So this is the typical hexagonal bipyramidal molecule and the metal is at the center to distinguish between axial and the, the planar I have given different colors for the ligands does not matter it is a homolyptic or heteroleptic. Now again consider these 5D orbitals and, and place Cartesian coordinates and place this molecule here and place 1 ok. You can see now the impact on dz square and then you can also see the impact of uh, dx minus y square and then dxy the impacts are very similar to what we saw in, in previous example of hexagonal planar except the influence of dz square rest would remain same. So now let me write uh, crystal field splitting diagram for this one. So phi are there here So now I have written 4 energy levels with uh, the least energetic one is uh, W degenerate obviously you can make out which is this one the orbits that are least affected when you visualize hexagonal bipedal molecule are dxz and dyz. And the, the maximum affected orbital is dz square because 2 ligands are coming. Uh, in the right in the same direction. So this is d z square and as usual d x y will be having maximum overlapping with uh, 4 ligands in the plane as a result this is d x y the one left 
is without uh, any problem one should be able to write what is this one this is dx minus y square. So, this is how hexagonal bipyramidal crystal splitting can be drawn uh, in this fashion to show the relative energies of various orbitals. Hope you have understood how to write in a simple way Cartesian coordinates and then putting the geometry at the center and then try to place the ligands to understand their influence and writing the appropriate crystal field splitting diagrams. So, let me summarize now crystal field theory. Crystal field theory provides a basis for explaining many features of transmetal complexes that you saw in my uh, last uh, few lectures and the examples include why transmetal complexes are highly colored and why some are paramagnetic while others are diamagnetic. So, that information about magnetism also comes. The spectrochemical series for ligands he explains nicely the origin of color and magnetism for these compounds and there is evidence to suggest that the metal ligand bond has covalent character which explains why these complexes are very stable. And of course, that I did not really mention about that nephrolaxetic effect we say and that is coming under ligand field theory I am going to start that one. And molecular orbital theory can also be used to describe the bonding scheme in these complexes. Uh, to understand better about the significance of the ligand field one should go for either ligand field theory or uh, I would say molecular orbital theory. Nowadays ligand field theory and molecular orbital theory are almost same. A more in depth analysis is required uh, however, to understand all aspects using molecular orbital theory as it involves tedious calculations. So, let me stop today and uh, begin my next lecture on molecular orbital theory. Until then have an excellent time reading chemistry.